All right. All right. So excited to get back together with folks today. Um, our team is is kind of continuing to to build these trainings out. I think um, so far we've been hearing some really great feedback from folks about how these have been helpful. So hopefully this next round will be useful to you as well. Um, again, just to kind of reinforce who's part of the team who's pulling these trainings together. Um, I think you all know me, but I'm Diana Fiorentino, Internal Communications Manager. I'm joined here by my illustrious teammates, Mariah Donahue, who's our Web Marketing Support Manager, um, Ashley Dill, who's our Content Specialist, Julia Quinjazul, who's the Director of Digital Comms and Content Strategy. The best. <laughs> So for today, what we're looking to talk through is some of my favorite topics, uh, creating announcements and events, um, how to make sure that we're doing these the right way. These, these things are probably some of the most powerful communications vehicles that we have to get in front of our folks here at WPI. So really excited to, to talk to, about this a little bit more. Um, we're going to talk, spend some time talking about um, events and announcements, how to tag them the right way. Um, we know tagging is probably one of the most important things to make sure that things show up where they're supposed to in Drupal. So um, making sure that we're getting that done the right way. When you're adding the content, making sure that we're doing that um, according to the best practices. So we'll go through that a bit. Making sure that we're all able to add images to both, um, both announcements and events. Posting date, so making sure that the right date is showing up. So sometimes folks want things to not show up immediately. They want them to show up in the future. Then um, we, we can ensure that we're using the right um, field to do that. And utilizing the announcements block versus making an announcement. So, um, so just for the logistics, we ask that you put questions in the chat or hold to the end. We should have some time to get to any questions as they pop up when we get closer to the end. All right, so probably my favorite thing to talk about, this slide kind of comes from communications training, which I think some of you may have been to. Um, announcements we found through a survey done maybe a year and a half ago um, to the WPI community, faculty and staff, is the preferred communication vehicle. Just because of the fact that um, announcements are these short little blurbs of information that kind of give people exactly what they need when they need it. Um, it's kind of, we, we were trying to delineate between news stories and what announcements are. And we found that when people go to WPI today or go to the WPI today website, that the first thing that they look for is announcements. They're not looking for those kind of big flashy things. They're looking for those snippets of information that they can get from different areas across campus. And that's where that all, all that information kind of flows into. <clears throat> So when you do post an announcement, it post appears on the announcements webpage, which is linked here, as well as, as long as it's tagged correctly, the WPI Today email and specific web pages um, that you can tag as well to make sure that they're showing up there. They can be pitched to the media. So this is something where I don't think a lot of folks are aware of is that we often have the media kind of combing through our website looking for um, content ideas or looking to see if we've got folks who match up to a specific area where they look, they're looking for content. So if we've got some announcements out there that have got really interesting stuff in them that it's new and interesting and the media might be open to, we will pitch an announcement to the media. Um, so just from like a housekeeping perspective, to know the difference between using an event and using an announcement is that anything, any event that is not hosted by WPI but has WPI attendees at it should be an announcement. So if we've got a lot of folks showing up to some sort of conference and we wanna make sure that folks are aware that our folks are there, um, we would use the announcements feature to, to promote that. Putting that in the calendar doesn't really solve for anything because it doesn't ask folks to show up. Typically, we're not inviting people to outside conferences and events, things like that. We're only, we only want people to come to our own stuff, which is why they would fall within events. Does that make sense? Okay, next slide. So what content is best for announcements? What do we wanna see show up in announcements? We want to see achievements from anyone in our community. We want students in here. We want faculty, staff. As you hear that information kind of bubble up within your area, 
we want to make sure that we're promoting that. So this gives even our students a sense of pride in the fact that, hey, we've, we're talking about you. We want the world to know about all the awesome stuff that you're doing, along with our faculty and staff as well. For all of you staff members, you're doing an awesome job in promoting the work of faculty. How do we make sure that we get the work of staff out there as well? So keep that in mind when you're, when you're going through and drafting these types of materials that this is some of the things that we're looking for. In addition to that, oh, sorry. I have a few more things in there I want to talk about. It. Um, any types of speaking engagements, presentations. Um, we ask that faculty do a write up if they have a published paper or a book. Um, if they've got a patent, we want to know about that. Research projects are, tend to be pulled in here. We tend to do deep dives on research within news stories, but this is a way that we can know about the research that faculty are doing outside of that. Um, as you're probably aware, we do campus operations updates. So, you know, we've got Stratton Hall reopening. What does that look like? That will be all in an announcement. Um, any changes? So all the information that comes through from say T&I, all of that's pulled through in an announcement as well. Um, we also tend to put newsletters out there like this. So uh, our team manages Heard Highlights newsletter that would be posted here in an announcement. Um, T&I also does new hires through here as well. Thanks, Veronica. I get excited, I have to dive a little deeper. So kind of the reverse of that is the calendar of events. So I kind of mentioned some of this a little bit earlier, but events are activities with a set date and time that are hosted by folks here at WPI. As we mentioned, if it's a, an event that's not hosted by WPI, but has WPI attendees should instead be an announcement. Um, if there are questions around that, please let us know, because that may not be abundantly clear um, what our delineation is there, but hopefully that makes sense. So types of um, topics that you would use for events include theses, presentations, department gatherings, town halls, discussions, panels, um, student related activities, that type of thing. Um, so also our team, just so that everyone's aware, the events planning office does manage events, we just promote events. We do have an events um, promotion toolkit on the marketing resources page. So if you do have an event that you're looking to promote to the community, um, I'd ask that you check that out because it's a really helpful guide to think through all of the different ways that you can get the word out about your event on campus to others. Um, and I think this this one I'm, oh no, I am doing this one. Um, so when you're creating an announcement or an event, you do need the title and headline. I'm sure you've seen these before, but you need to fill out the title slash headline, the date of the event or the announcement, um, the name of the department making the announcement. You include anything, any related content within the body block, as well as any photos, graphics, and links. Um, you can choose your audience within that feature as well. So. Um, if you do, if that event is being led by a specific faculty or staff member, you could tag them so that it shows up for them as well. And then you can also choose the post website tags. So you, this is where you go to choose the WPI web pages that you want the content displayed on. Um, so and this is where I'm, I'm going to just kind of hammer this one home a little bit further. We really need you to, to tag WPI today in this section that helps us confirm that that information is going to be fed into the next day's WPI today. And another quick note on that too, content for the next day's WPI today needs to be included in the system before 12 p.m. on that day, of, of the day before. Um, if it's after 12 p.m., it'll show up in two days later. So it won't be the next day, it'll be the day after that. So that's the cutoff time for content for the next day's WPI today is the day before at noon. Okay. Um, so in addition to all of these things, event posts should also include the time of the event. Makes sense. Need people to know when they're gonna show up. Um, the organizer's contact information is important. So if people have questions or if they have food sensitivities or anything like that, that they're able to let the organizer know. Um, the location of the event. And if you do have a registration page or anything like that, you wanna link off to that. <clears throat> um, I'm, I'm, this, I'm, messing over to you now. Actually, I'm not sure what slide number we're on. So. <laughs> no, yeah. so when you're adding content to either an announcement or information about an event, there's certain best practices you want to try to follow to make it easier for users to get that information in a quick and concise way. 
So you want to try to keep the content short and informal, keep the titles simple, short sentences. If you need to use bullet points, you don't want people, especially in announcements, sometimes it can end up being like long paragraphs, multiple paragraphs. It's better to keep everything as short as possible, keeping a title a max of about 10 words or 90 characters. And when you're linking to anything, say you want to link to something within the text of that announcement or event post, don't put the actual URL in there. It can look messy, especially if the URL is really long. So take advantage in Drupal of just highlighting that word and then adding the link to the word so people can click on the actual word for the, for the page instead of seeing the whole URL. Also, feel free to make use of images. Images can convey a lot of information quickly, give people a sense of what you're talking about in a really fast visual way. You need to make sure that the content is original. So don't try to copy and paste anything directly from an online source. If you do need that information, it's better to link it over. So make sure that whatever you're putting up is original and not found somewhere else. We have several announcements templates on the marketing resources page, and it should there is a link to it um, at the top. We have a, a link for announcements, and it's on that page if you just scroll down. And there's several different announcements types. Usually, we have templates included for like the most common ones that people might need to use. So these are a template that you can kind of just like plug in the information, but then also an example so you can see how it might look in a finished format. And then if you aren't sure maybe how you want to make your event post look, definitely just scroll through the university calendar, see how other people are doing their posts as well. All right, so let's get into Drupal and really look at how to create our announcements and events and how to tag them appropriately and also how to get them into our web pages. So I'm going to um, switch my screen over to Drupal. Can everyone see Google Chrome and I'm logged into Drupal here? Okay, awesome. Um, so once you're logged into Drupal, um, you'll see that you're logged in if you have this bar up here at the top and it'll show your profile, et cetera. Um, so I'm going to go into shortcuts and click on my content. And when I click on my content, it'll bring me into um, the list of groups that I'm a member of. And you can see that Gompi is a member of marketing and our Drupal knowledge sharing sessions uh, group. So if I click on into the group, I'll see um, that I can see the group information, the members, as well as the nodes, which is all of the content that is inside of the group. So if I want to create an announcement, I'm going to click on add new content. And I have the option to add an announcement or an event and I'll click on announcement. And now I have quite a few fields here. Um, we're going to start off with the title. I'll just use some placeholder text. This is Drupal announcement number two. And our next field is the announcement date. Um, you can choose the announcement date um, for when the announcement is going to be displayed on the announcements page that we have in Drupal. Um, so your announcement will technically be published if it is if you choose to publish it um, upon creating it. However, it will not be pulled into any of the feeds or displayed on the announcement page until the announcement date. Um, so for now, I'm going to keep the announcement date for today so we can see the announcement on the announcement page. Um, you also have the option to add an image. Um, so if you click on add media, that's going to bring up the Drupal library and you can choose from whatever is in here if you already had something in there or you can upload from your computer by clicking choose files. And then if you chose one, then you would um, just click and press insert selected. 
Um, you can also add images within the body. Um, so after your hero image, you also have the body text. Um, this is your standard text editor, bold, italicize, um, and then you can also click on this media button to do the same thing to upload media. Um, so I'm going to add some body text. And as Ashley was saying, um, if you want to include a link, it's best practice to hyperlink it instead of pasting the entire link into the body. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to grab a link, let's say um, our announcements page. Um, so I'm just going to copy that URL and then bring it into the text. And if I highlight um, the, the text that I would like to hyperlink and then I click on this little link icon here, I can paste my link. Um, and then I also have the option if I go into advanced, to have the link open in a new window. This is recommended for any web pages that are external from wpi.edu um, because we'd like to keep users within wpi.edu for um, staying within our site. But if you're linking to an external site, it's best practice to open it in a new window. Um, so once you have your link in there, you'd like to click on save and save again, and here is your hyperlink. And if you needed to edit it, if you put the wrong link, um, you can click on it again and click the pencil icon that will, will let you um, change the link or remove the link. Uh, so there is our body text. Um, now we have a few fields down here, which are all different types of tags. Um, we have the audience field here, which is important for um, WPI today. Um, if this is something that's geared for faculty and staff, uh, you would choose the audience that applies to your announcement. Um, so I will choose the faculty, and then I will click this plus sign that will bring that over to my selected options. And I'll do the same for staff. And then, for example, if I added alumni by accident and then decided I'd like to remove them from my selected options, it's the same process. You click on alumni, click on the minus sign, and that will bring it back over to your available options. In the post to websites field, this is the field that is going to bring your content into your web pages. Um, we will later on show how to add that block into the web pages. However, um, to bring it in, uh, this is tagging a group. So any page that you put in the post to websites field is going to be um, a group. So for example, for this one, I'd like to bring it into our Drupal knowledge sharing session group. Um, so once I start typing it, I'll get suggested for Drupal knowledge sharing session. Um, and then I also have the option to add more. So I'll click on add another item. And if I wanted my announcement to be in WPI today, I'm going to add WPI today to my groups. Um, an example of another group that say maybe you're not particularly a member of, but you'd like to bring your announcement in would be um, WPI Insider. WPI Insider is our hub for podcasts. So for example, if you were writing an announcement about um, a faculty member on your team that was featured on a podcast, then you can choose WPI Insider and that will bring your announcement onto the WPI Insider page. Um, and then our next tag is for faculty and staff. Um, so if I wrote, um, say I wrote a podcast announcement about Ashley being featured in a podcast, then I could um, add her profile into the faculty and staff field. And this announcement will be tagged onto her profile. So when we visit her profile, we'll see this announcement there. And um, same as the post websites field, you can add multiple options here, 
or remove them with the remove button here as well. Now we have the option here um, to check the checkbox to have this published now or to keep it unpublished. Um, if you're working on an announcement and maybe you're waiting on some content that you wanna bring in here um, and you wanna keep it unpublished for now, then you would leave this unchecked. You also have the option to schedule your announcement um, if you come back up here to the top. So if you see the scheduling options, then you can decide to have it published on a specific date and also unpublished on a specific date if you would say only like to have it up for a week. Um, but neither of these are um, required. This is just an option for you if you wanted to um, keep this announcement unpublished until a specific date. So I'm going to remove those fields um, and I will publish my announcement and I'll click on save. I have an hour. Apologies for the technical difficulties. Okay, awesome. Um, so once I click save, now I can see that my announcement has been created. And I don't see the um any of the information that I put in there. I'm going to try it again. I think when I ran into the error, it removed um, some of my text, unfortunately. I'm a bully. All right. All right, I'll add my audiences back in and my post to websites field. And then I'll tag Ashley and keep it published and save. Okay, looks good now. Um, so here is our announcement. All right, next we can move on to creating an event. Um, so the beginning of the process is very similar. You want to go back into my content to go into your groups and then choose the group that you'd like to create the event in. Um, again, I'm going to choose our Drupal Knowledge Sharing Session group. And I will click Add Content and I can add an event. So the events have a lot more um, details that are necessary for creating the event in Drupal. Um, you have quite a few tabs up here at the top. Um, the first tab is just the title and date. So I will choose the title Drupal event number two, um, and then I'll choose the date of my event. Um, so let's say my event is occurring on October 19th. So I'm going to choose that from the calendar here and I'll say it's at um, 2 p.m. So I have this timer here. You can you can use, um, by clicking on the little clock icon, it will bring up this scroll field, but you can also click on the field and type into it. So my event is happening on the 19th at 2 p.m. Um, if you have an event that is going on for a couple days or even a week, you can choose um, an end date. Uh, but as this mentions that this is optional, um, but if that were the case, then you can choose the end date the same as you chose the start date up here. 
We also have the field to choose all day event. Um, I believe if you choose all day event, it won't display a specific time. It will just have um, the date that the event will occur on. And if you wanted to start over with the um, date of the event, you can click clear end date and time and it'll clear all of these fields for you. Now going into the second tab, calendar options. Um, we have a few options here for checkboxes. We can decide if this is a WPI only event. If this box is checked, then um, the event will display on the university calendar, but to view any of the details about the event, the user will have to um, log in to Drupal using their WPI credentials to see the event details. Um, so if you wanted to keep this event under wraps and um, keep it to the WPI community, then this would be um, your choice. Then you also have the option to exclude it from the main university event calendar, but it will be pulled into other calendar widgets, such as um, the calendar block that you put on your own pages, um, but you can exclude it from the main calendar if you'd like. Um, you can also hide any of the calendar options. Typically, a Drupal event will have buttons that allow users to add the, um, add the event to their Google and Outlook calendars. Then again, we have audiences. Um, same goes for events as it does for announcements. If you would like the event to be in WPI today, then you would bring over the faculty and staff um, audiences into your options or alumni, students, et cetera. And then I will go into the event details is where you'll add the description, again, this is a standard body text editor. And then you also have a field for the event abstract. So this will be pulled into the calendars with a quick um, teaser about the event. Then our next option is more information. This is if you would like to upload a file, such as maybe um, a PDF or flyer that's associated with the event. Event website, um, if there's anything external or even internal on WPI.edu that you would like to display on the event, we have the event website field where you would um, paste the URL in the URL field, as well as um, add the link text, which is what will be associated with the URL. Um, if this event has any project center that's related, um, then you can tag it here. Um, say for example, this was related to the London Project Center, um, then these options will come up. These are already in Drupal. Um, so these will be tagged to the event. Next tab is the registration. Um, if applicable, if you have registration associated with your event, you can choose the registration deadline with the calendar here, and you can post the registration URL. Next is the location. There are on-campus locations loaded into Drupal um, that are also linked to our WPI interactive campus map. Um, so if my event was happening in Fuller Labs, I can type in Fuller Labs and choose to have um, Fuller Labs as my event location. Seems like we can have multiple locations. Um, if this is the case, if you have um, say, your event happening in multiple spots on campus, you can include those here as well. Um, and then this field is where you will choose um, which floor and room number the event is happening. If there's an off-campus address, you can add it in here. 
Um, so if I choose United States, then it will give me the option to add the street address, et cetera. All right, and the last tab that we have uh, is the contact information. Um, so this is my event. So I will put myself as the point person of contact. And then you can add the phone number. And if you notice, the post to websites field isn't under any of these individual tabs, but um, you have access to it from any tab. Uh, so you can use the post to websites field the same way that we do for announcements. This is going to tag the event to any pages that are associated with the groups that you add for the website. So I will choose the Drupal knowledge sharing announcement, um, knowledge sharing session group. Um, and then if I want it in WPI today, I will add WPI today. Um, we also have, again, the option to publish now or leave unpublished, as well as the option to schedule the event um, for publishing um, if we don't want it to be pulled into any of our fields or displayed on the website until a specific date. So I will have it published and save now. And here is my event. Um, it's brought in the date, the time, the location, my description. I have these buttons here for adding it to my calendar. Um, it lists all of the audiences of which I chose for the event, um, if I had a website. And it also brings in the location so that users can see um, where the event is happening on campus. All right, so um, we did go over the dates for the events and the announcements. Um, again, just a reminder, if you want to include anything into WPI today for the next day, it needs to be entered um, before noon. Um, and you can um, decide to have your announcements or events scheduled for publishing. Now let's go into, um, I created a web page for um, showing the announcement and events blocks in the web page. So I'm going to go back into uh, my group. And then I'll go to my page. Um, it's called announcements and events demo. Um, and when I come into the page, I have the options to view the page, edit it, or um, edit the layout. Um, I want to edit the layout to um, add my announcements block and my events block. You can see that the announcements and events that I have created are already being pulled in to these blocks. Um, so now I will show you how to add them. I'm going to go into the layout and I'm going to hide the ones that were there previously so we can see the new ones. Um, so if I click add block within my section. It's going to open this new pane over here where I can um, add my blocks. You'll see the announcements, campus calendar, and news. Um, so I want to bring in the announcements block. So if I click this link here, it will open this window to configure the block. I can choose to display the title or not. Um, the default title is going to be announcements. I can also decide how many announcements I'd like to display. Um, I think we only have four, but you can choose up to 48 at a time. Um, and then we also have this option here. The see more results should display filtered content related to this page. The block has um, a button that says see more or see more announcements. Um, and if you click on that, do you want it to either display announcements related to your page and related to your group? Or do you want to bring it to 
all of the university content, which is um, this announcements page that shows all university announcements. Um, I think the general consensus is usually to display filtered content related to your page, and that is the default option. We can also override the title. Um, Say, for example, if you wanted to add something a little bit catchy, um, such as uh, stay in the know, um, then we can use that to override the default announcements title. And so I will choose display title to have my new title uh, displayed. And then I will click add block. And that will bring my announcements block in. And let's scroll up to the top to save the layout and see how that looks. All right, here is my announcements block and my Drupal announcement that we created and my error. Maybe that was the one that gave us the error before. Okay, all right, here is the Drupal announcement that we created together. And now, now you know the difference between adding the announcement block versus adding an announcement. Um, so what we did when we created those announcements is being dynamically filtered into this block because we used the post to websites field and chose the Drupal knowledge sharing session um, in that field, which is the group that this page is in. And that is why that announcement will be displayed on this page. Um, the same goes for events. Um, so if I want to display the events that I created, I'll come back into the layout and um, add the campus calendar block. Um, so I clicked add block and I will choose campus calendar. I have all of the same options that I did for the announcements. Um, let's say I want to override my title again and all this, get involved. And then I will add the block and save the layout. And now we can see the event that we created. Um, and this is where we can see the, the teaser that we added um, and some quick information. Um, and clicking on that will bring you into see all of the rest of the details. Now, does anyone have any questions? I do. So this last part, when do you have to do that? When do you have to do the block? Um, the block is for any, um, if you already have the existing pages, a lot of our pages will already have these blocks in there. Mm -hmm. um, but if they don't, that's how you will add it in. So say our, say a department is creating announcements, but um, then they think, oh, well, why aren't my announcements showing up on my web page? It could be because they're missing the announcements block in the layout. So they would have to go into the layout and add the announcements block like we did. Okay. So if I add an, amount, an announcement, do I have to do the block part as well? Um, yes, if it's not already there and you okay. would like the announcement to show up um, on the web page. Okay. Okay. I think. Okay. All right, there's a question in the chat too. Um, are there specific criteria for pages that can be tagged for events announcements? Um, I'm not sure that I understand. So it was my question. I'm sorry, I'm having trouble hearing you. Can you hear me? Sort of, yeah. Can you hear me? Yep. Sorry, my headphones do the thing where they pause when I start talking, which is unhelpful. Um, <laughs> That's okay. 
can you tag any page that you want? So we recently had um, an SDG hub page created. I don't know actually whether or not it has those blocks at the bottom, but can it be like any page, any page that has that block is what we can say to push to that website. <clears throat> like we can push it to that website, even if that block doesn't exist because we don't control that page. Right. So if the block is on the page, um, then that's how it will show up. Um, if you were to tag that page, we're not tagging pages specifically, we're tagging groups. Okay. So if the page was in, um, you know, group ABC, among other pages, you would choose group ABC instead of the specific name of that page. And it and would go across that entire group. Yep. For any okay. pages that have the block within the page. Okay. Um, in most cases, like I said, across our site, most um, landing pages will have somewhere in there the announcements and events um, widgets, as well as, you know, we have some other dynamic content that is controlled by marketing communication, such as news stories and media coverage. Um, so those are those are similar in nature. Mm. Okay. Okay, I have another question for you. Yep. So when, when you're doing an announcement um, and you have to save the page and send the link to somebody to review before you publish it, can you walk me through that? Yeah, sure. No problem. I was um, having trouble finding the link. I just want to. Okay. So if I created an announcement um, such as the Drupal announcement that we have that doesn't have the error, um, so are you saying if you created this announcement and you wanted someone to review it before you published it? Yes. Okay. Um, so if you were in the edit panel um, and you know you filled everything out, you would mm -hmm. choose, you would uncheck published or right. leave it unchecked and save it that way. Yeah. Um, and then to send them the link, all you have to do is oh, copy the link that's in your browser. Okay. Um, and so, then they'll have that link. So can you can you do the link before you save it as well? Because I think that's what I did. You if, know? You, if you um, choose this link from. Oh, yeah, it says edit. Right. So okay. if you choose this link, I think. They would be able to see it will bring them into the edit panel like this, it won't bring them into the view panel, which I oh. think that um, for review purposes, it would be better for them to get the actual announcement link okay. um, to read everything. Um, but if they were logged into Drupal and they were a part of the group that you created the announcement in and they had the access, it would bring them into this edit panel. Okay. Okay. So... I saved it and I sent the link and I closed out. Where do I find the announcement if I want to go back and edit it? Do I go through the nodes again? Yep. Um, so you would go into your you would go into your content um, mm -hmm. the same way that we came in to create the announcement. Um, okay. But instead of clicking on adding new content, you would see it down here. See it down there. Okay. Yep. Gotcha. All so right. if you if you clicked on um, the title here, it's going to bring you to view okay. it. Okay. But if you wanted to skip a step instead of going to view it and then going into the edit, you could also um, come over here to operations and choose edit node. And that's going to bring you directly into your edit tab. Oh, okay. Oh, all right. All right, perfect, great. Thank you so much. No problem. Um, and that also reminds me that you do have the option to um, delete anything that you've created in your group, um, such as announcements and events. Pages which are created by um, Marketing Communications in our help desk, you don't have um, the access to delete them, um, but you do have the ability to delete any announcements and events that you've created. Um, also, once they are created, you 
can go into them and you have the layout tab option um, if you wanted to get fancy with some of the content blocks that um, we've introduced and that we have the tutorials on. So if you come into um, the layout of an announcement, um, there's all this, there's some default content that's going to bring in, you know, the body and the date and everything that we created in the edit tab, but you can, you also have the option to add content blocks such as um, accordions or featured links or media banner, et cetera. Um, so you definitely have some flexibility with creating announcements and events as well in terms of design. All right, do we have any other questions? There's one more question in the chat. Oh. Can someone view the unpublished announcement if they don't have Drupal access to that area? Um, if they don't have Drupal access to that area, such as the Drupal group, they cannot view the unpublished announcement. That is because you can only, um, you only have access to groups that you are a member of. Sometimes you can, question. Oh, sorry. 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 <laughs> I was just going to say, sometimes um, you can do it, take a screenshot and send it to somebody. You could always do something like that if that's helpful for them to see it. Anyone else have any other questions? Feel free to put it in the chat if you don't want to say it out loud. I think that's probably it, Mariah, for questions. Okay, no problem. All right, I'll stop um, the recording and then this will be posted um, under the Drupal Knowledge Sharing Sessions spot on our YouTube channel. Um, and thanks everyone for coming. Thanks.